G'day guys, welcome back. I'm gonna do a sandwich pour today, but before I get started, I'm gonna show you my chocolate and strawberries pour from last week. It's dry now. Look how gorgeous it is. Just reminded me of a bar of chocolate or those little individual chockies and they got that soft strawberry center. That's what it reminded me of because that's my favorite chocolate <laughs> the chocolate with the strawberry in the middle so that's it there turned out beautifully righty oh and i was baking yesterday because i had a craving for caramel popcorn with cashews in it look at that i made three of these containers <laughs> Excuse me, I'm taking it to work tomorrow. Look, caramel corn with cashews on it. I've got clean fingers because I've just put gloves on. Look at that. I make the caramel corn and then I um, well, I put these salted cashews through it, you see. So it's really yummy. And it's, um, it's quite crispy, crispy and light and delicious. So that's what the girls at work are getting tomorrow. Minus a few little pieces for me, of course. <laughs> so that's it. Let me pop it away. All right. Eat it all. Okay. Sandwich pour. Now, inspiration for today's pour. One of my pouring friends, Beck. Hey, Beck. She wants to do a pour for a friend of hers um, to go into her bedroom and it's to match her quilt cover or doona cover, whatever you call it. Uh, and she said it's got these big like roses on it but they're very pale um, and there's a little bit of green I think for the leaves and then I've thrown in a little bit of this tan color for a little bit of the stems two shades of pink because they will lighten with all the white so that's what I'm going to do a little rose garden pour okay so I've got my two big cups of white those are Montmartre white and I've mixed that one part paint, one part pouring medium, um, and then a splash of water. The pouring medium is my 60% glue, Elmer's glue all, and 40% water. So that's those two guys there. And then the colours are global. So just a burgundy that I make. This one is called Flesh. This one is green oxide. I didn't want a very bright green. This is a duller sort of a green. I think that looks like rose leaves. And then this one is actually called rose. It's a lovely pink. So there you go. And because I've only got a little bit of paint, I've actually only mixed 25 grams of pouring medium and 25 grams of paint because I don't need it very much. Um, probably maybe two and a half times white to one part paint. You don't need a lot of paint. So I've only got 50 grams of paint in here. So let's do two drops of the treadmill silicone. This spot on brand is the one I like. It's a nice thin sort of an oil. So the cells pop up and they, they're nicely round. They don't go all wobbly because it's not a thick oil. So let's give that a Shoe fly, there's always a fly in my studio. I'll get you later, you just wait. Can't have it going in my paws, ruining them. It's the worst thing, isn't it? Having bugs crawling over your beautiful paintings. Okay, so two cups of white. So I'm going to use one cup in the first layer, then I'm going to put one layer of each color and then top it off with some more white. The white I do have a little bit thinner than the colours because white's an opaque colour. Uh, the cells really have trouble trying to come through. So if you're doing a sandwich pour, make sure that your white is a little bit thinner. Otherwise your cells aren't going to be able to pop through and you'll just have this really thick layer of white sitting over the top of everything and, and doesn't matter what you do torch you know the cells aren't going to come through so make sure that your white's a little bit thinner now i think i'm going to layer these um i was going to layer them differently but 
Um, actually, I might start this one from that way and then start that one from that way. They'll, they're the same, but they'll just be different. <laughs> so a little bit of burgundy in that one. And then a little bit of pink. And I think the, um, the pink and the burgundy go beautifully. And then this pale pink and the green just go beautifully too. I didn't want the, um, the sort of brown colour next to the pink, so we'll do that. So that's that one done. The opposite here, we'll start with the tan. Because I want it next to the white, I don't want it too sort of in your face, too, too heavy. So that's why I thought I'd put it next to the white and it can just like tone down a little bit because I just want a hint of it, not too much. And then the green. Hopefully I've got the same amount in each. Probably got a little bit more paint in this one actually. That won't matter. It'd be nice if they were a little bit different. So they've both got the same colours in them but just in opposite order. So one will have the brown on top and one will have the burgundy on top when I flip them. Why not? So I'm just going to do two flip cups. I'm going to just kind of swirl it around because I don't want stripes between the two cups. So I'm just going to try and like swirl my cup around as I flip it over. Okay, here's the burgundy. <clears throat> And you need to have, you know, one darkish colour or a couple of darkish colours so that they do kind of stand out a little bit because everything else is going to be quite pale. So you do need to have a couple of dark colours. So I've got the burgundy and the, the green. That's quite dark colours. Now I'm going to see if I can just very carefully drizzle the white over the top. The white's thinner so it wants to fall through but I just want to keep it on top so I'm just going to drizzle it carefully if I can over the top okay and then when I've got a nice layer then it's a bit easier to pull the rest over the top like so all right, there we go. There's our sandwich. Got our white bread, and then the filling, and then another white bread. Someone said to me, can't you do a brown bread sandwich? I'm thinking, well, no. Like, that would be horrible. The whole idea is having a pale, pretty painting. Now, if you're going to use, like, a, a brown or a or black as your, your sandwich, then it'll be awful. <laughs> You just won't get that light and airy kind of feel to it. So, no, it wouldn't work at all. Oops, brushed a bit. How's that looking? Oh, pretty pink. Yeah, so I've got the Montmartre White in here because the Global White splits. So I'm not using that. Um, I still like using the Global Paints. Uh, they're lovely creamy paints, but just not with the white lately. All right, uh, I don't need that to sort of fall down too much. So I'm gonna kind of just, I don't know, just see what happens, kind of wiggle it. We'll see. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Okay, that kind of just broke up my stripes because I didn't want the, you know how you get the stripe in the middle? Alrighty, so this is kind of a bit stripey anyway, but I'll, boop, I'll no doubt tip that off. Um, now, I'm going to get a corner catcher and keep some of this. Um, I'll keep, I'll put the corner catcher on these two sides here. And 
push the paint back. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? It's very delicate, which is what I was after. So pretty. Now I'm going to do this corner and then I think I'm going to torch so that I can get bigger cells <coughs> today. Excuse me, I'm still sick. <coughs> I can feel a cough coming on. <coughs> and you can't stop a cough, can you, when it's coming? <coughs> and then <coughs> once I start, I can't stop. You have a coughing fit. All right, I'll try and I'll try and stop it. <coughs> Big breaths. There's my torch. Now, I don't want to catch that. I don't want to catch the corner with my corner catcher because it's got the stripes on it. <coughs> and it'll, all it will do is push the, um, the stripes back again. So. <coughs> A little gentle torching. One sec, I'll have a drink of water. I hardly ever get sick. Once every couple of years I'll, I'll get sick, so I can't complain. It's probably a bad flu year, but I have had my flu shot. So I can just imagine what it would be like if I hadn't have had my flu shot. Probably a lot worse. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll do some more torching and then I'll tilt. Don't want too many cells. I'm just trying to see if I can get something in here. <clears throat> something in that. That cut has kind of gone a little bit yellowish, that um, flesh coloured paint. And up here where I've got quite a lot of white, I'm not going to get anything through there. Nothing wants to come up. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's enough for now. I've got these corners covered and I'm, I'm just going to tilt off some of that because it's, it's not this beautiful, smooth kind of blended background. It's, it's the <clears throat> weird little bits that came out of the cup afterwards. So I'm happy to get rid of those and I'll use the fact that I have to move those to stretch my cells out. Try not to lose all that green because there's, oh look at that, that green. <clears throat> yeah, there's not that much green showing through here, so. Right, so that corner's done. So pretty. I think I would like to <clears throat> move this that way a little bit because that's quite dark there and that's quite pale. So I think I'll move everything off that way a little bit, but I'm gonna torch again now that I've had a bit of a stretch out of the paint and see if I can get some more cells to come through. There's green cells popping through under there, you guys. This is like a little rose garden. You know that song about a rose garden? How does it go? I never promised you a rose garden. Yeah, don't sing Julie, especially with a sore throat. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> I love that song anyway. All right. Now I'm going to take off. <clears throat> See if I can get rid of some of that white down there and just bring that over a little bit, okay? So we'll just walk back and forth, back and forth, over towards that corner. Don't really know where I'm going now, I'm just moving. 
And I'm not going to straighten up my lines. So let's just look at that for a minute. So I've kept that curve there. I automatically wanted to straighten it up, but I went the other way and, and left it as a curve. So hopefully that looks pretty. So what do you think, you guys? It's pretty, isn't it? It is. I had no idea what to expect. And I don't know if I like that dark bit. I guess I do. Like, it is what it is. <clears throat> Got a little bit of dark there. That's why I wanted it, you know. That's why I put the burgundy in, because I wanted that little pop of brightness. So does it remind you of a rose garden? Let me just finish, fix up my little corners here. So if Beck's watching, what do you think, Beck? Are these the kind of colours, or do we need to add something or maybe take something out I think they work really well together I think the colors are really pretty but um, you let me know Beck. she's coming to do the intermediate class in a couple of weeks and she wants to do this big pour then so I thought I'll just have a little practice for her See what I can come up with. Okay, I think we're done there. <clears throat> the more I look at it, the more I like it. Maybe I would have liked the cells to be a little bit bigger. So maybe I should have torched um, a little bit earlier. No, walk away, woman. Walk away. And we're not going to torch in there. If you torch in a like in a stripe like that, you tend to get like a little row, like a little caterpillar of of cells. The green is doing a bit of a weird thing. <clears throat> when I use my red oxide, it does the same. It must have something to do with the pigment. It's kind of doing. They look like four-leaf clovers, which I guess is quite a good idea. If you've got a rose garden, you can have some four-leaf clovers. But I'll, I'll bring you in and show you this. Well, there's a three-leaf clover there. But um, yeah, it's the green oxide that's that's doing that. Yeah, it must just be because it's an, it's an oxide. It's a different sort of pigment. It is acting a little bit differently. But it's very cute. It's very sweet and dainty, isn't it? Does it... Does it remind you of a rose garden? Maybe it's a little bit too pale for you? Or... Not sure. It'd look very pretty in a little girl's room. What about on a much bigger scale, hey? It would look really pretty in a little girl's room. I'll get out of the light so I'm not a shadow there. Maybe the, the flesh colour needs to be a little bit darker because it's looking quite yellow there. Maybe that's that's kind of the only thing I'm thinking is change that to um, maybe a raw sienna, <clears throat> so it's not throwing yellow as much. Hmm. But um, yeah, let me know what you think. I'll take you down. Look close up. Very pretty. Did you see that fly? I'm gonna to have to go and get it. All right. So over here, this looks like melted ice cream, doesn't it? You know how your your strawberry and your vanilla ice cream melt together <laughs> like that? Oh, I've got food on the brain today. All right. So there's some really pretty cells there. And then these are the little ones that popped up afterwards, after I finished tilting. A torch and these little tiny green ones popped up. Oh, look at that pretty pink one there. Little ones popped up. There's not much in there because that's a thicker white band there in the middle, you can see. So, as I said earlier, if you've got a, a large amount of white in one area, your cells aren't going to come through all that well. 
So if you're having trouble with your cells coming through, make your white a little bit thinner. Okay, here's the, the little clover patch up the top there. Yeah, those green cells are just a bit just a bit weird. They're not quite round. And um, I think that's just because of the because it's a green oxide. Here they are again. They look very pretty against the pink though, don't they? So there's some really nice cells in here. Overall really pretty poor. Happy with that. But um, yeah, I think maybe just change up that flesh to raw sienna so we're not getting that um, yellow, that yellow tone through there. But what do you think? Does it look like a rose garden? <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a go at sandwich paws. I love them. I actually love them more than normal flip cup paws. I think they just look so pretty. All right. That'll be it for now. And um, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.